Okay, here we roll. This is the second part of simple harmonic motion. Now, so far we've looked at the spring and the mass and what happens to the force as the spring and mass bob up and down. Now what we're going to do is look at the same things but with graphs and we're going to show the position over time. So if we were to take a graph over time and show the x value over time, what we'd end up getting if we pulled the spring down and let it go is something that looks like this. Okay? A simple wave. And it's called a sine wave. And we can define this by x equals omega sine theta. Oh, we forgot one important point. We have to define how big the maximum of the wave can be. So we actually say x equals a omega sine theta. A is the amplitude. It's the maximum value, capital A, that the x can get. It's basically how far we pulled it down to start with. Okay? Sometimes this is also written as xo. Okay? So A and xo are the same thing. Now, the big question is, what is this funny looking omega term? We better work that out before we go much further. Now, to get what omega is, we need to do something else. Whenever we have a sine wave, something important that we need to know is, how long did it take to make one complete motion? Now, if you pull down the spring and let it go, and it bobs up and down, you can measure how long it takes to do that one time. The time that it does to do this motion is called the period, T, capital T. So T is known as the period of oscillation. It's the time it takes for one complete cycle, up, down, and back again, okay? It's measured in seconds. And that's an important term to remember. Now, the period can also be transformed, if you like, into a thing called the frequency. The frequency, measured in hertz, okay, is basically how many cycles we get, how many cycles of motion per second. Cycles per second. And to get that together, basically, is quite, whoops, quite simple. I just lost the whole thing again. I've got to learn how to not do that. So the period, the period is the uh, seconds for one cycle, okay? Measured in seconds. The frequency is the cycles per second. So basically, frequency is how many periods will fit into one second. For example, let's say I have my oscillating mass and it takes half a second, 0.5 seconds, to go down or up, down and back again. Okay? In that case, the frequency will be equal to 1 over the period. Okay? So the frequency is going to be 1 over 0.5 seconds, which is 2 hertz, or cycles per second. Okay? This is uh, good stuff to know. Now, what has this got to do with the funny looking omega? Remember, the x here, we've defined it as a sine omega t. Alright? This is x. The maximum value of x is a. Right, well we needed to know what the period was to begin with. There's a bit of maths behind this that you standard level guys won't need to worry about. The high level guys will see this in high level maths. But basically what this does, this term here, is it allows us to make this value here defined by this equation. Alright? So the value of omega, alright, stick with me here, is 2 times pi over the period. Why 2 times pi? We'll get to that in just one second, okay? The units for this, and let's give it a name, it's called the angular velocity. The units are radians per second. Now I don't know about you, 
but I hate radiance. They always make me feel a little bit nervous. Let me try and explain why this isn't nerve-wracking stuff, okay? And it should make a bit of sense, I'm really hoping. And somehow or other, I'm gonna lose all this stuff again. So frustrating. Let's see what happens. So here's the best way to try and explain where this radiance thing comes from. Now you'll notice that as this guy goes up and down, we could also be showing the motion going around a circle. Okay? It follows the same sort of path. Up, down, and back again. Okay? Now this should help us understand where radians come from, because you might remember that 180 degrees is pi radians. Now let's just have a look for a second how far this little thing gets, okay, how far it gets in what, like uh, 180 degrees. That's this turn here, okay? So we're gonna actually move this out of the way. Here's the basic same thing, okay? Now, if we showed this process moving along this graph, we would go up and down, it would be the same as going up and down, okay? Now that is, as we know, 180 degrees or pi radians. Then, to do the next bit, we have to go the further part. And in total now, to get through one complete cycle in that amount of time, okay, one complete cycle is like saying two pi radians that it's moved through, okay? So 2 pi radians is almost like you could say the distance it's moved. And it's done this in time period t, the time. Now you guys should remember from mechanics that distance divided by time is velocity. It's kind of how fast the thing is moving, right? Or how fast it's going up and down oscillating through this cycle. So. We're not really talking about distance though here, we're talking about the angle that the thing goes through. So it goes through an angle of two pi radians in t seconds. So like velocity, but this isn't about a distance velocity, this is about an angle velocity. And so we call this the angular velocity. We give it a name or a symbol, funny looking W, it's measured in radians per second. And what we can do with this thing is we can use it to describe our sine wave mathematically. Okay? We're going to take this term angular velocity and we're going to basically put it in the mathematical equation to describe this line. Okay? And to give it its place, the x value is equal to the amplitude times the sine of, in brackets, the angular velocity times time. And someone's calling. Give me a second, please.